Alright, this next one is an older song. Not old as in like, never mind, I won't go there. Um, not that old, but it's Open the Eyes of My Heart. And we don't sing it a lot, but it's a really good song to really concentrate on the words and just um, let it renew yourself. So just concentrate on the words and have a good time and worship God with it.
But hey, guess what? We don't have an option at this point. We're going. Uh, you can't just say it might rain. We can't go. Um, but we're going to go. We're going to have fun. I've been up there before whenever they didn't have a lot of snow, and it's okay. They'll keep enough going to where we'll have a good time. We'll just all be piled up on one slope this time instead of scattered all over the mountain like we are at other times. So, and middle schoolers, we still got space. Come on, let's go skiing. We're staying in a little log cabin on top of Wolf Laurel. So, and Jordan, you can go and ski. You don't have to snowboard. Right, Your mom said that you could go if you didn't snowboard. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, excuse me for slipping in like this, but to be honest with you, I just really didn't want to answer a whole lot of questions before church tonight. Um, I'm going to tell you what I told Nicole out in the parking lot just a moment ago because it's first that she's heard about all this. So I'm going to tell you what the nurses said today and then I'm going to tell you that the nurses are wrong. Because last night I was over with my dad and my dad weighs 260 pounds, okay? My dad's a big man. And since he's been in hospice, which was Saturday morning, every meal is the same. It's enough broth to fill about that much of a cup and jello. And that's what my dad's been existing off of since Saturday morning. And to be honest with you, I think he's just sick of it. Matter of fact, they sent him the wrong tray one day and they sent eggs and grits. That was the best meal he's had. He, was, he loved eggs and grits, but they, he wasn't supposed to be eating eggs and grits. He was supposed to be eating broth and jello. He said, it tastes like a mouth full of grease. And if you can imagine eating grease every meal and that's all they give you to eat, I think he's just tired of it. So anyway, last night he decided he didn't want to eat. And this morning he decided he didn't want to eat. And at lunchtime today he decided that he didn't want to eat. And so one of the uh, nurses pulled my stepmom out into the hallway and said, understand that this is a process that we see quite frequently. When, when they start refusing to eat, that means that they're preparing themselves to die. And whenever he feels that he has the permission of his family, then the process will probably be quick. And they asked her, said, have you told him it's okay? And she said, no, I haven't told him it's okay. I, I don't want to tell him it's okay. So anyway, she called me before, right before lunch. And uh, so I went over and, and sure enough, when I got there, I mean, he didn't even respond to me. And it was hard. And then about three o'clock, I'm out in the hallway talking to Jack, and I come back in, and she says, well, guess what? He just woke up and said, are you going to feed me any lunch? And she said, do you want lunch? He said, yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> and so he ate lunch. And then about 5.15 or so, they brought a tray by. He was asleep, so about 5.30, he woke up. He said, you got any dinner over there? I'm hungry. So... I think he just really didn't like eating the broth. They're bringing him in sure now. That's a big improvement, isn't it? It's a real big improvement. She asked him, said, do you like that? He goes, it's okay. Do you think you'd like another flavor better? It's okay. You want to drink some more? It's okay. So anyway. So, I really don't know how to evaluate where my dad is right now. I just know that he is still very serious. And, uh, you know, he's sleeping all the time. And, uh, you know, it's a very serious situation still. But the fact that they were looking for him not to be wanting meals, and then all of a sudden he's back wanting meals. Go figure. But anyway. Thank you for your concern there. 
Those of you that were with us on Christmas Eve, Randy brought a message to us, and he referred to a video called Close, The Music Box. It's actually called The Music Box. Oh, by the way, we got guests in here tonight. Brian told me on it and didn't welcome guests. Who'd you see, Drew? Whose name don't you know? got a last name or is Catherine her last name? Dixon. 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 Good. We need to get out of Catherine a car so she can fill it out and we can say, yay, she's here. And we need to get a picture and put it on the board so everybody can. Anyway, this is called Music Box. A Christian parable. What is a parable? What am I doing? Oh! It's a understandable story that helps us understand something more complex than. Is that what you said? Something like that? All right. Remember, Jesus used to tell a lot of parables. Well, this is a parable that we're about to watch tonight. And guys, this thing is corny as it comes, okay? Just get ready for 30 minutes. It's weird. But, whenever it's all said and done, you'll go, aha. Uh -huh. It's weird. It's about a music box. It really is. So, Chief, we ready? Let's do it. Once upon a time, there was a city. This city was quite unlike any city you might live in, or any city you might have visited. This city was covered with a sadness, and the sadness enslaved the people who lived there. This is a story of a man in the city and the freedom he found amid the sadness. Are you standing at the crossroads of confusion? Have you decided? Yes. 
But after he got it, it changed his life. <laughs> wow, what was that? He didn't share with anyone, anyone else. He, why, why didn't he share? Why did he say to the angels when they appeared in the bedroom? She won't understand. So it made him happy, but he wasn't convinced it could make anyone else happy. So he went and hid it to himself, and he loved what he had, but he didn't share it with anyone else. One thing that we do, we do really good maybe with a quiet time, but we don't do very good with a loud time, if you understand what I'm saying. Stephen Curtis Chapman says it pretty good. Live out loud. So, I hope you understood tonight. Better than I hope you understood, I hope that we, I hope that we learn from this. I hope that we put it into practice. Um, first day back in school, I figured we would be down tonight. But guys, we've been pushing that hundred for a long time. We've been